Thank you so much, everyone, for being here. My name, I'm going to go into a little bit of an introduction in just a moment. We are here today for Soji Inclusive Libraries. Hadi, welcome. And let's just keep rising throughout this day. So I'd like to acknowledge that I'm coming to you today from the uh, Clayton Lake Tene territory. Uh, we respect, or I respectfully acknowledge that that's where I am today. I'm on the unceded ancestral lands of the Clayton Lake Tene, whose land I live, work, and play upon. Uh, but I'd like to also acknowledge that each and every one of you are coming and beaming in from places all over uh, British Columbia. And thank you so much, Musi Cho, for being here and uh, learning with me today. So my name is Lisa Price. I am a teacher librarian with school district number 57, Prince George, BC. I am also a district curriculum support teacher. Um, and I, sorry, at any point, if you can't hear me, please just like let me know so I can speak a little bit louder. We've got two different sessions going on in the space I'm in today. So there might be a little bit of background uh, noise going on as well. Uh, so I'm a, also a district curriculum support teacher and with that um, I am the district SOGI lead, so sexual orientation and gender identity. And uh, I've been in this role for three years now. I am or have been an educator for about 13 years. Most of it has been within libraries. Um, my first three years were with the Nisa Chwaisi Cree Nation as well as the Yekuche First Nations. And uh, so the Nisa Chwaisi Cree Nation is in uh, Northern Manitoba in a beautiful little community about an hour Northwest of, um, or an hour west, pardon me, of Thompson, Manitoba. And then the Yukuche First Nation is about two hours northwest of Prince George. The rest of my career has been here in Prince George. Um, during that time, I've been a TTOC, a prep teacher. Uh, but like I said, most of it's been teacher librarianship. At one point, I was also a district teacher librarian and uh, helped run and facilitate the uh, DLC, which our fearless leader, Joseph Jeffrey, um, now works out of and uh, leads our way, which is fantastic. So SOGI, sexual orientation and gender identity. One of the things that we have to remember as educators is that every single person that we meet and interact with has a sexual orientation or a gender identity, which is why we use SOGI as opposed to 2S LGBTQ. You may have noticed I said 2S in the front of it. Um, the LGBTQ community is um, moving forward with their own truth and reconciliation. And they are, uh, they've moved the 2S to the beginning to honor the fact that our 2S um, our two-spirit uh, Indigenous uh, peoples were here before the rest of us, and so they've moved the acronym to the front of it. Uh, so you'll hear that more often when people are speaking about the, the 2S LGBTQ community. But for the purposes of our education, we use SOGI so that we are being inclusive of every single gender identity and every single sort um, sexual orientation. So there's a little bit of um, my, our conversation today, I guess, is where it comes down to. So I would like you to take a moment just to, in the chat, to say, hi, where are you coming from? Maybe add your pronouns as well, so that we kind of build a community, because we are a community of learners today. Um, so if you want to do that, you can just fire them into the, uh, the chat window. That would be amazing. And um, we're also going to talk about the roles that we have as teacher librarians in regard to SOGI. And um, I've got a couple of recommendations that I'd like to give to you. And we have a Q&A opportunity at the end. So hi, who's here? Who's out there? <gasps> Alberta, yay, welcome. We've got another Prince Georgia. Hi, Andrea. Lady Smith, excellent. Hadi, Richmond, wonderful. Kelowna, Richmond, lovely. Awesome. Hey, Victoria. 
Campbell River. Wonderful. Keep adding them if you feel comfortable doing so. It's lovely to have you all here. Oh, hold on. I can't see my little notes to go with this slide. Sorry. Nope. Ah, there we go. Okay. Hi, Paul River. Nice to see you. Uh, so, Soji Inclusive Libraries. Libraries, as we have talked about and heard um, so beautifully from our keynotes this morning, are created as a safe place. They are a welcoming place, especially for children and youth who may not necessarily fit into the mainstream. And so it's our responsibility as teacher librarians to really focus on creating that safe and inclusive location. And naturally, like it's something that we as librarians typically do anyways, because we want our space to be that cool place where everybody wants to sneak down to and see what's happening. And and it makes an even bigger impact for our 2S or our 2S LGBTQ students when they know that it's also a safe space specifically for them. And so uh, there's lots of different things that we can do to make sure that our, our spaces feel safe and inclusive for all of our students. Oh, I'm going to back up. Sorry. So what are some ways that we can do that? Uh, we can, a lot of it has to do with atmosphere, uh, but a lot of it has to do with things that we put up on our walls, the resources that we include, how we welcome our students and build our space together. So I have personally a display that's in my space. I have books that I've specifically um, collected that I know there are certain students, and I know you're thinking of specific students in your schools as well, that are going to gravitate to those specific books. You know who they are. You know who I'm talking about already. Um, we can also add different posters that build the positive space. So behind my desk, I have an all about me wall and it has my beautiful rainbow family up on display for everybody to see. It has my pronouns on display as well as, um, pardon me, my my flags and my degrees are all up there and it it just creates that little bit of a connection between myself and my students it also makes a difference for the families that come in and beside my all about me poster or bulletin board pardon me is a poster that says this is a positive space and it has um, wordings to say along the lines of this is a safe place for all of our members of the 2S LGBTQ community, including, but not limited to, trans, bi, um, heterosexual, homosexual, like it lists all intersex, it lists a whole bunch of them. And it makes a big difference for our families coming in. This summer, when I was getting ready for the start of the school year, one of our families was coming in with one of their children who was brand new to the school. And they were doing a tour um, to make sure that the student and the family knew exactly where things were in the school and what needed to happen. And as they came into the library, it was an amazing experience for the child but even more importantly for their parent, because the parent was looking around and was like, wow, this space is so big, it's so welcoming. And then the parent turned and saw my bulletin board as well as the poster of this is a positive safe space. And the parent automatically opened up, wow, things have changed in our schools this is so amazing like when I went to school this wasn't happening and I basically shared their life story with me about being in the community but not feeling like when they were in a school that they had a safe place to be and knowing that that parent now associated our library with a safe place for for their family as well as their child that that is ex so exciting to build that relationship right from the beginning of the school year 
And, oh, I forgot to say, if at any point you have any questions, just pop them into the chat for me and I will do my best to address them as they come up. So questions for me. Uh, how do you select resources, both new and when making recommendations? One of the biggest things that I try and focus on, and it seems to be consistent within the teacher library and the BCTLA association, is that we want to have representation in the resources we are using within our collection. We want to make sure that they are authentic voices. And so I personally, when I'm looking, do a little bit of extra research, because that's what we do as teacher librarians, we research. So find out a little bit of extra information. Who did the illustrations? Who is the author? Do they, or um, do they have somebody in their family that's represented in the LGBTQ community? Or do they themselves represent, or um, pardon me, identify within the uh, 2S LGBTQ community? This makes a big difference for our learners as they interact and read those different resources. We also have um, a really fantastic team, and I'm going to speak about Prince George specifically. Uh, we have a really fantastic team in Prince George that's always looking and working together to connect and share resources. So it's not just me looking for the resources, it's the team. And we work together to try and share and build resource collections together. Uh, at in Prince George, we also have a district learning commons and a centralized cataloging system. And so with that, it means that uh, we build kits that are specifically to support the SOGI education. And it's really quite an exciting uh, oh, participants. Okay, it's really quite exciting to have and be able to provide resources that every single teacher can use and interact with throughout the school district. So, how do you display and catalog the resources? Um, so, one of the things uh, talking about the DLC, we. Um, the DLC specifically has worked to create a handle or a subject heading that um, focuses on SOGI content. So now that when we as teacher librarians search our catalog, we can type in SOGI and the responses will pop up for us. It makes it a lot easier for teacher librarians now to access those resources, especially when we have the centralized cataloging system. So now I can look at all of the schools in the district, and I can see what everybody else has that's connected to SOGI. It also is connected with our kits. So when we're looking through specifically the DLC website, we can just type in SOGI and those pop up as well within the descriptors. Um, as to how I display my books, there's a big debate about how to display SOGI books. And there's an ongoing discussion in Prince George about what is the best way to do it. And honestly, I kind of leave it up to my students. So last year I did a little bit of an experiment and I did a beautiful display. I had all of the books together. I had a sign that said, actually one of my slides later on will show it. Um, all are welcome here and underneath it had all of my SOGI titles on display and there was another sign that says SOGI inclusive resources. And so students were so excited. They would come into the library and they're like, ooh, these are my books. And they were taking them left, right, and center. And, and they were so, so excited. And then I was like, you know what? I want to try and use the space that I've got here for some other displays to promote some other books. And so we decided, my clerk and I, to intershelf the books. But we still wanted to make them accessible to our students. So we did a, something called a purple dot system. We put a little purple dot on the spine of each of the books so that if students wanted to find them, they could still look on the shelves and find the books fairly easily. Now, here comes the uh, little catch with it. We put all the books on the shelves and I kid you not, two days later, I had students coming in, Mrs. Price, where are the Soji books? And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> well, maybe my plan for using space effectively was actually already happening. So we dug out all the books and we put them back on display in another spot. And 
my students have been so grateful because they just, they know it's something comfortable. They know exactly where they are. Sometimes the books get mixed up and they get put up on the, the regular shelf or into the stacks as well. But that's okay because they still know that they might be looking through the stacks and come across one of those purple dots and that, oh, that's, that's my book. Um, but at the same time, they have that comfort knowing that in off to the side under the window are all of our Soji books. It makes it so much easier. And one of the other reasons that not just because the kids really shined light on it. I had a discussion with one of our teen librarians here in Prince George, and one of the things that he said really hit home for me. Finding our books that relate to 2S LGBTQ community um, content should not be a scavenger hunt. They shouldn't have to search them out. They should know where they are. They should be able to find them and they should be able to successfully interact with them without anxiety. And that has really helped direct how I have them displayed. The, the librarian even went on to say that, you know, you can have them with rainbows up and make sure that it's bold and beautiful. And so there's, it directs the eye right away. And that, comes up to your teacher autonomy, of course. How do you want to display them? How do you want to share them? But coming back to the kids, they really showed me what they needed. And I think that really, really helps to show how they have ownership in the space. So these are some of my favorites. I honestly, I have a little to-go bag within my district job and these books are always in my to-go bag and um, life-changing for me. And I'll get to that in a second. So the first one for me is It Feels Good to Be Yourself, a book about gender identity. Uh, this book is written by Teresa Thorne. Uh, Teresa's uh, child is a trans child. And so Teresa really wanted to make sure that there was a book out there that really showcased and shared and was an appropriate way to share gender identity for all ages. I have read this to kindergarten classes. I have read this to grade seven classes. All of it works so nicely. It's such a, it's so, so beautifully written. And the illustrator, Noah Gringy, is absolutely fantastic, uses such beautiful illustrations. Another reason that I love this book is, um, because of the art forms that Noah Gringy uses, you can add it in and use it as a cross-curricular opportunity. Uh, a lot of the um, paintings are done in watercolor, and so you can see a lot of the texturing that happens within watercolor. So there's there's just so many like lesson opportunities for this book that you can just interact and pull in together. But it's just it's so beautiful. One second. I have it in my bag because, like I said, I always take it with me. Or I throw it on the floor. So I just want to show you a couple of the pages just because, like, inside cover. Beautiful. So this is Ruthie. Ruthie identifies as a trans girl, and it talks about that's her gender identity. And then this is Ruthie's brother, Xavier. And Xavier identifies as a cisgender boy. That's Xavier's gender identity. Xavier is quite exuberant in the book too. At one point he is sharing with his parents, I'm a boy and I love being a boy. So it's just, it's really, really fantastic. It talks about being gender fluid. It talks about non-binary identities, trans and cisgender identities. And it talks about how it's amazing just to be who you are. Um, this is JJ, one of their friends. JJ identifies as neither boy nor girl. 
and just has felt like them their entire life, which I think is beautiful. And it also acknowledges pronouns. So it uses he, she, and then JJ uses they, them pronouns. One of my favorite parts though of the book is this page. So it's got cute little babies on it. And it says, see, when you're born, you couldn't tell people who you were or how you felt. They just looked at you and made a guess. Maybe they got it right. Maybe they got it wrong. What a baby's body looks like when they're born can be a clue to what the baby's gender will be, but not always. And it says, when people guess wrong, it's okay to let them know. Ruthie was five when she told her parents, I know you think I'm a boy, but really I feel like a girl. Oops, Ruthie was a girl all along. They just didn't know it yet. I just, I love how they've worded it to make it feel inclusive and to acknowledge that sometimes parents, they don't know, right? And then we've got Xavier, our sweet exuberant Xavier. When people guess right, it's also okay to let them know. Xavier was three and a half when he told his family, I'm a boy and I like being a boy. Like it's just so beautiful. And at the end, there is an author acknowledgement as well as an illustrator's note. They've included more helpful resources and they have helpful terms. So they've got a glossary at the end of it a note about pronouns and then some additional resources as well. Like it's just, oh, I take it everywhere I go. And it, it's one of those books where um, when you're reading it to kids, you can see the light bulb go on for them, especially if they're trying to figure out their own gender identity. Um, I had one child I read it to and they came up to me afterwards and they're like, in the book like that's that's huge when they 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 have that connection for them and and so it just it warms my heart to be able to provide resources that have that authentic voice that build those connections and you get to have that opportunity another one that I love is Untangle Makes Three um, one of the things that I have been trying to do within my collection is to make sure that I have representation of gender identity as well as sexual orientation. And so Tango Makes Three is a really great way for, for our littles to connect with. Um, and I also have uh, A Day in the Life of Marlon Bundo. It's a little bit political, but um, I've read it to littles as well as older intermediate and some high school classes. The high school classes get quite a kick out of it because of course, um, if you haven't read it, there's a, a lovely stink bug in it that looks a lot like Donald Trump and is like, boy bunnies can't marry boy bunnies. Boy bunnies have to marry girl bunnies. And it gets very, very, um, quite the discussions going in the debate about um, uh, rights within the 2S LGBTQ community. Uh, the other one that I love for um, talking about family diversity is Stella at Brings the Family. And with this one, when I'm introducing it, I, I quite often will talk about my family as a way to get started and say, hi, so I, I don't know if you know, but I have a very different family than most people. In my family, I have two moms and there's two dads and there's two kids and we all live together in the same house. Would you like to share about your families? And so the kids are like, oh yeah, yeah. So, and again, this can go for, for our primaries all the way up to intermediates. High school students are a little bit more hesitant. They prefer the like the chapter books when we're discussing about family diversity. But in any case, um, intermediates still participate occasionally. And so they share about their families and they're all excited about, oh, and don't forget my cat. I love my cat. Excellent. I love your cat too. And, um, and then we talk about how uh, we lead into the Stella brings the family and how she has a big 
problem and she's really worried about the Mother's Day celebration that's coming up because Stella has two dads and what's she going to do? And so we we talk about like, how can Stella solve her problem as well as is should Stella feel uncomfortable about bringing her two dads? No, they're her dads. It's great. Like it just, it's so beautiful. The, the conversations that happen when it comes to um, building around picture books and how we can incorporate the education right into our school libraries. Check in my next slide. Oh, this is the display that I did at the beginning of um, last school year. And um, I based it on the book, um, the All Are Welcome book. And I built the rainbow and it just, it, the students came in. And like I said before, they just gravitated to the display and they knew exactly where they were. And then I changed where they were and they were very, very upset by that. So it, it makes a big difference when you have them right there and, and on display. So as for additional tips and tricks, I would like to invite you at this point to share any of the tips and tricks you have done in your libraries because we are a community. This is what we do. We share ideas with each other and, and we, we build upon them. I've heard lots of different things. Like I have a bin that I have all of my Soji books in. And so the kids know where they are. I, I include lessons and I build it into my teaching. It doesn't necessarily have to always be around Pride Month, uh, though last year I took the initiative, my family has a, a rainbow pride flag and I asked them if I could steal it for the month of June and put it up in my life or in the library learning commons. And uh, as soon as I had it up there, I had a little grade one student come in. <gasps> Business price. Uh oh, <laughs> I know what that flag is that's the gay flag. And I'm like, you're right, that is the pride flag. And you know what, we're going to read a story about it today. <gasps> really? And it was just so great, because you could tell that they were excited. And the, the discussions that we had with the students over the month of June really, really made a difference. One of the initiatives that I'm doing this year is to um, bring our Soji Club. Ooh, yay, somebody added to the uh, the chat. Thanks, Andrea. Um, so tell students about our purple dot system. Thank you. Um, my Soji Club made a lovely rainbow bulletin board that explained the dot system. Oh, I love that. And I photocopied a bunch of the fronts of the books and put them on the board so that kids, kids could see what kind of books they were. That's beautiful. Thanks so much, Andrea. Um, one of the things that I've been trying to do this year is um, in my school, we are trying our soji club a little bit differently this year so in the past it's been um very there was a lot of turmoil around our soji club and so our students decided that they wanted a very very discreet location um tucked away so that their confidential confidentiality was respected which i totally acknowledge um, this year, what we wanted to do was we wanted to build a network of support for our uh, SOGI students. And so we meet every Tuesday at lunch in the library learning commons. And we have, I think it is seven different people on staff that are their safe people to connect with. And so we rotate through who's responsible for being um, with the club. And um, so I will be there every Tuesday and then we have our other teachers rotating through. And then that way the students always know that even if I'm not there because I do my district job on Thursdays and Fridays, there's other people in the building that they can connect with and always know that they have that safe network. And so one of the initiatives that they are talking about for them is running a, like organizing a Pride Month of activities in June. They also would like to manage a bulletin board in the hallway outside of the library. So right now it says read with pride and uh, it has a bunch of our um, Soji inclusive books up on it. But 
I would, they would like to take ownership of it and they want to have Soji flags up there, the different LGBTQ flags. They, they want to have little updates on special dates that are happening throughout the school year. Uh, personally for myself, I have a planner that I've written out all of the notable, important to us LGBTQ dates. And so as I go through my planner, I know, oh, this week is trans awareness week right like it's it keeps me up to date on what's happening and it also allows me to help support our students and acknowledge all of their awesomeness does anybody else have any ideas to share in the chat oh there's another one uh, Mandy says, we host Soji resource sessions for teachers. So we pull every Soji book from the collection and set them out in categories, read alouds, intermediate fiction, teen, nonfiction, graphic novels, prodi resources, etc., and have a computer set for the staff to explore our digital resources. We bribe teachers with food. And then once they're in the space, we can explore the collection and see what they have. I love that. That is so powerful bringing your staff together so that they know what resources there are. Wow, awesome. Uh, I paired up last year, I'm gonna bounce off of your idea. I paired up last year with one of our school SOGI leads and, and she was just like, I need to get these books in the classroom with teachers reading them. This is, this is non-negotiable, this is my goal. And so every week she would pop into the library, she'd grab a new book and she'd walk into a teacher's classroom and be like, here this one is the one you're reading this week and it was so great because they would look at it like are you sure yep i'm sure this is the one you're reading this week and it was it was so great because the two of us were like collaborating on a regular basis okay what what dialogue did they have about this book this time okay well that should lead into this discussion next week and like it just it's such an opportunity for us to come together as a staff to be supportive of each other but also to be supportive of our students any other ideas i'm not seeing any more so additional resources. Uh, for those of you who are not aware, the Soji123 book list is really, really fun. Oh, thank you, Alana. I'll come back to yours in just a second. The Soji123 book list is updated annually. Uh, Scout Gray is our, oh, pardon me. Scout Gray is our district Soji, no, not district, sorry, provincial Soji lead. And uh, they work together with a team to update the list so that as new publications come up, they're added to it. Another one that's really fantastic is I Dream Library. So it's based out of the lower mainland and they, the, the purpose was behind I Dream Library is to make sure that books have authentic voice. And so they break their radar down into four categories so that everybody can have an opportunity to have representation. And so they really focus on QT BIPOC, so queer, trans, uh, black, and people of color um, books so that everybody has an opportunity to see themselves within the books. Um, there's the bias box. The one that I really, really love is prideandlessprejudice.org. So you can actually go to their website and you can sign up and they will send you free resources. So last year they sent me um, this day in June, as well as um, Adrian becomes a brother. And so when they arrived, I was so excited and I took them to school and I was like, look at the books we got in the mail. And of course, all the kids were super, super excited. Sometimes it takes a while for the books to arrive. So I put my order in with them, I believe in February and the books didn't actually come until May, which was okay because it was just in time for Pride Month. Uh, but they are a not-for-profit organization, and so they use um, different events and donations to help supply teachers and teacher librarians with uh, books that help support 2S LGBTQ content and the SOGI education. It's so awesome. Uh, and then, of course, Focused Education used to be BC Iraq. Um, they have 
beautiful list of books that are around Soji um, content. And if you have never um, shared a book with ERAC, or sorry, pardon me, Focus Education, you can actually submit books to be evaluated if you notice they're not on their list. And then they have a team of uh, teacher librarians and teachers who go through and they evaluate the books based on the BC curriculum, uh, social content, the core competencies. It's, it's such a fantastic resource. So if you ever have a book that maybe comes uh, challenged by a parent or a teacher, you can just be like, oh, actually, this one has been evaluated by Focused Education and it is meant to be here. I had a teacher about four or five years ago, I think, come up to me and say George was not appropriate to be in the library. And I was just like, actually, it is. So it's really nice to have that little bit of backup if you don't if you're brand new to being teacher or librarian, or if you're just not sure, and you're not sure what is going to be in those books, it's just, it's really nice to have that little bit. So I'm just jumping back um, in the chat. So Alana said, I make Soji displays for the library with a QR code. Yay, that leads them to our Rainbow Reads catalog that students can browse and find books. I'm going to ask our GSA if they want books labeled with the rainbow sticker. Great, I, I love it. I, I really think giving the students the opportunity to share what they want to happen really, really is helpful, right? We, we want them to feel like they have ownership of the collection. We want them to feel like they're included. But at the end of the day, of course, we have our uh, discretion in terms of what we bring in, but we know what they want and they know what they need. So we have to be able to accommodate that accordingly. I'm just trying to keep track of time because I am a talker. And Brandy says, I'm at the high school, so we've built a Soji resource list in Destiny, so students and teachers can easily search the catalog for Soji titles. Our GSA students are also um, very involved in recommending titles for our school library and love seeing books they've chosen in the library. Excellent. I love it. Yes, having backup is definitely important. All right, so we're coming to the end of the presentation. And one of the things that I really, really think is important for us as professionals, and especially since we are teacher librarians, when we do inquiry, we really like to include the reflection piece. And so I really try hard in my presentations to build that in as well. And so I, I have three questions that I would like you to reflect on today. Uh, what remaining questions do you personally have? What resources or ideas do you still need, possibly for yourself or for your library? And then what is one thing that you can do to improve representation in your library catalog? And so you may not want to share, but I invite you, if there's something that you would like to add into the chat as an acknowledgement of your reflection, I definitely invite you to do that. Um, because it's, it's part of our practice. Honoring our reflective practice is super important. I know that one thing for me that I need to work on within um, my space and um, within my catalog, I, well, of course, we, I didn't even talk about budget, but we're limited by budget. And so one of the things that I am personally trying to do is break my budget down into percentages so that I have a certain amount put aside for Soji books. I have a certain amount of books, or pardon me, uh, percentage set aside for truth and reconciliation, nonfiction, and really sticking to that budget so that our students can have the representation that they deserve and that they are honored. Um, has anyone come across 2S book for primary age students? Yes, um, it is called 40,000 Beats. Let me just check. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's 40,000 Beats. 
if Mandy, I'm going to jot my email address into the chat. If you can send me an email, then I can like beam you the cover and the author of the book. Oh, there we go. Yes, 47,000 beads. Oh, perfect. Yay. Teamwork. So yes, 47,000 beads. You can find it on Goodreads. Thanks for dropping the link in. Uh, Andrea says, I need more visual representation. I put books up on display, but I need to have easier ways to identify them as well as more room decor finger. I love it. Great. Thank you for reflecting. Thank you. So uh, coming to the end. Here we go. So. Masi Cho, that means thank you in Deketh, which is our Klaitle language here in Prince George. Please take an opportunity to visit the sojieducation.org website if you haven't before. Um, it's full of resources. Also, if you have an opportunity to check out, um, I didn't even talk about it, I apologize, uh, Brian Gadinsky's Lost Boys Consulting. He has a huge section of um, learning resources and soju related resources and lesson plans so if you wanted to build them into your uh, curriculum in the library learning commons is a great place to start and if you have any questions or need to connect with me i can be reached at l price at sd57.bc.ca thank you so much everyone i hope you have a less stressful uh, rest of your learning day today with the BCTLA conference. Uh, what is Brian's last name? It's Gadinsky. Uh, Gadinsky. Gadinsky. Yeah. And it's um, Lost Boys Consulting. Um, you, oh, I am a terrible speller. I apologize. It's supposed to say consulting. Um, if you just Google it, it will uh, pop up in Google for you. So thank you, everyone. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day. Masichos Nachalia, you have honored me with your presence. Thank you. Have a great rest of your day, everyone.